Ah, my worst dog bite ever. What you can do if this happens to you at home. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the button to sign up for notifications. And then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. So I want to take you way back in time. Way back. I'm working in my veterinary clinic. It's time to check on the animals for the day. He was a dreaded Chihuahua, otherwise known as a Chihuahua, named Carlos. Look at that evil grin and that deep, deep growl. Really, his name was Carlos. He was a Chihuahua and he was like crazy aggressive. Nobody's opening the cage, like nobody's willing to open the kennel. Eee. But I, ooh, the fearless vet, I'm gonna do it. I can get Carlos out. He's got, I think he had pancreatitis. He need to get his IV flushed. I'm like, okay, I've got this. So I open the kennel door. Lots of growling. I stand back. It's okay, little Carlos. Come on out. Little Carlos, he leaps forward. He's out of the cage. And where does he attach? His mouth around my chin. Oh, ah. Like really, like just like that. And he's hung on, I pull my chin out, and he's still hanging on. Like unreal. Look how bad that looks. I think it even looked worse. I do what any manly veterinarian would do. I scream, ah! Carlos, let's go. Okay. And that's what you have. Blood on the chin. Blood on my lab coat, blood on my hand. I'm like, oh, nasty puncture marks. Carlos, how could you? Really, so I had this whole line of puncture marks all at the base of my chin. He just latched on, he wouldn't let go. I'm like, ah! And he finally let go as I'm shaking back and forth and dropped back into his cage. Quite satisfied with himself, by the way. So, if this happens to you, you are aware of some of this happens to you, to you, AKA a dog bite, the skin's punctured. What do you do? Well, here's what I do. The first two principles here are first of all, you know, cleaning off, preventing this bite wound from becoming infected as about 20% do get infected and require antibiotics. Secondarily, controlling bleeding is needed, especially if there is excess bleeding. So I got the water running, lukewarm. I got myself an antiseptic scrub. So this is the chlorhexidine or the hibitane scrub. Squirted a little bit of that on some gauze. And then I just got my chin in the sink. And I cleaned it off. Oh, slightly hot, mind you. Okay. This bite wouldn't look good. It's still there. Okay. okay. Let's get rid of this. All that blood, clean out those puncture wounds. Got our hibitane, a bit damp, running water. Okay. How does that look? Better. Second, there's going to still be some bleeding oozing after, so then just apply that compress. I use more gauze, apply that directly to the wound. You're trying to slow the bleeding. Next, we're going to put something on topically to prevent this wound from becoming infected, turning into an abscess requiring antibiotics. What I did, what I find, in my opinion, to be especially effective Ta-da, the tea tree. So I put a couple drops on my finger. And then I just dab that on to the wound. Yes, tea tree can potentially be toxic to our animals when applied undiluted, but that's because they lick it. 
a few drops on top of a wound, assuming you're not gonna then consume it, is completely safe, really effective. So that's what I did, I was, I was cleaning it twice a day with this, dabbing it off with this gauze, then after directly applying a couple of drops of tea tree, I did that twice a day for five days, wound healed well. If the wound is really painful, it wouldn't hurt to give yourself a bit of a painkiller, such as you know, CBD oil. Based on my weight, I get about 15 drops. 15 drops it is. You wanna make sure this wound doesn't swell rapidly, you know, start to be painful, red, suggesting that it's turning into an abscess, a more serious infection. And regardless, you're concerned in any way, by all means, go ahead and see your position. What about the risk of other diseases that little Carlos here, AKA the poodle, which used to be a chihuahua, could have given me? Like what about rabies? What about tetanus? Carlos was vaccinated for rabies. He's a chihuahua. I'm not concerned about getting rabies from him. If you happen to be bitten by a dog with an unknown vaccine history, perhaps this dog is feral, I'll clearly talk to your physician about uh, post rabies exposure and treatment. The chances of you ever contracting rabies from a dog is virtually zero. Um, as far as tetanus, you know, ensure that you personally are up to date with tetanus vaccine. Could you get it from a dog bite? In theory, yes, you could. And clearly the biggest concern is infection, uh, you know, preventing this thing from turning into an abscess or something more serious. And what did that teach me, oh wise veterinarian, about small little dogs? Small but mighty. Yep, don't underestimate the power of a small dog. We've got a big growl, because that can come with a big bite. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.